Okay, here we are with the third and final part of a re review of unit G, an incomplete review of unit G. So let's go back to circular orbits. Okay, so um, here's a here's a satellite orbiting MS, and here's a mass of um, the Earth. And um, could you give me what the velocity is for the orbit? What is the velocity that's necessary to have this orbit with a circular orbit? Um, go ahead and, and figure that out in terms of these, of, in terms of these quantities and any constants. See you in a little bit. Okay, so again, once again, it's a equals f net over m, v squared over r, since it's going in a circle. Um, the force on it is g, mass of the satellite, mass of the Earth, all over the distance between them squared, so that's r squared, same as the circle. And then um, we'll divide that by a of the satellite equals the net force of the satellite divided by the mass of the satellite. So this is going to be the mass of the satellite here. Boom, 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 boom. And so um, V looks like it's equal to the square root of um, G times the mass of the Earth all over R. How far you are out. Okay. Hey, what would happen if I doubled the mass of this satellite? What would happen to the velocity that was necessary to go in a, in a circle? Go ahead and pause. Okay, it turns out that if if uh, you double this mass, it turns out that it does nothing to the speed that it's got to go. It's the, it's the exact same speed because it's the mass of the Earth, the thing that's being orbited. Okay, what happens if um, I take this mass instead of it, it being Earth, I have it be um, a planet that's four times more massive than Earth? How how fast would this have to be now? Would you agree that it has to be faster? If this is four times the mass of the Earth, it's got to be faster because this is really going to be pulling this in real with a lot of force. So this better be moving pretty fast that way so it doesn't fall in. Okay, but how much more speed will you need? Go ahead and pause. Okay, well, if you put four times more mass of the Earth, put a four here. Do you see how that four being in under the radical... You can pull it out and it would be two times the old the old velocity. So whatever this velocity is when you make when you quadruple this, it you need twice that. Okay, what if we're twice as far out? If we go twice as far out, what will be the new velocity that we'll need if we go twice as far out, but we keep the mass of the earth the same? It's not four times anymore, it's just the mass of the earth. What will be the new V? Go ahead and pause. Okay, well, I'll just put a 2 here. If you put a 2 there, it looks like it's going to be, uh, if I pull that 2 out, that's going to be 1 over the square root of 2 times the old velocity. That's what the new velocity will be. All right, a um, couple more things. Hey, after one quarter of a time around, like when it gets to here, how much work will be done by the force of gravity? Okay, go ahead and pause and see if you can figure out how much work will be done in one quarter of a turn. Okay, the answer is that um, no work will be done for a few reasons. The force of gravity is the only force on this, and since the force of gravity is the only force on that, and since it's, uh, it doesn't change its kinetic energy, the work done by the net force, which is the force of gravity, is uh, equal to the change in kinetic energy. So it didn't change its kinetic energy. So then that means that it didn't. It the gravitational force did no work in that period. Another way to look at that is the force of gravity, say right here, was this way, and the dr was this way. That's its displacement. And you see how they're perpendicular? Yeah, so the work done 
is equal to f dot dr. I guess the work done in that little distance dr is a little work done. So let me call it dw is f dot dr. But that's a dot product. And since this is perpendicular to that, this equals zero. Every point along the way, it equals zero. Not just for one full rotation, but for every point along the way, no work is being done. All right. Um, let's go over here and ask this question. Here's a, an elliptical orbit. We have a satellite that's moving at 10,000 meters per second. It's 2 times 10 to the 10th meters away here. How fast will it be going when it gets to here? 1 times 10 to the 10th meters per second. By the way, it's a 1,000 kilogram rocket. Go ahead and see if you can figure out how fast it's going to be moving. Okay, turns out that it's going to, it's going to speed up as it comes in. So it's going to actually speed up. Make that vector bigger. That's because it's kind of like it's falling into the earth and, and missing and, and zipping around. So it's being pulled in and it zips around and then it misses and it comes back around. All right, well, uh, this is an L equals L prime. That's the fastest way to get this done. And um, L here is R cross P. And L here is R cross P. And um, we chose two spots where the R is perpendicular to the P. And so we can get rid of the cross product. And these really need vectors. But we can get rid of the cross product and we can just say R1 times M V1 equals R2 times M V2. Get rid of the M's. And so um, this R times that speed has to equal this R times this speed. Well, since this is two times greater than that, then that's four, isn't it? That, or that's if to, In order for these to be equal, since this is two times greater than that, this speed's going to have to be 20,000 meters per second. You can do the math and show yourself that V2 will be 20,000 meters per second. Okay, I have one other question for you. Um, if I asked you, um, what was what's the work done by the, by the force of gravity going from here to here? How much work is done going from here to there as it moves from there to there? What's the work done? Okay, the answer is that, go ahead and pause and see if you can figure it out. Okay, the answer is that there is work done this time because it did change, it changed kinetic energy. And so the only force on this is the force of gravity. So the way you can solve this problem is you can say the work done by gravity, which is the net force, is the change in kinetic energy. And so the change in kinetic energy is going to be one half... 1,000 kilograms times um, V final squared minus one half 1,000 kilograms times V initial squared. So I'm going to just say um, V final squared is 20,000 meters per second squared minus V initial squared. 10,000 meters per second uh, squared. And so that's how you get the work done. You just do find the change in kinetic energy. Okay, last one. Escape velocity. Would you be able to derive the escape velocity of this? This planet has twice the mass of the Earth and uh, ten times the mass of the Earth and twice the radius of the Earth. How would you find the escape velocity? All right, so it's going to look something like this: e equals e prime, and you say the k at the surface, k at the surface plus ug at the surface, has to equal zero in order to escape. 